Would you release an update to your game without even trying to run the executable? I do it almost every day. What's up folks, this is Spius. In this video, I will show you how I write tests for my Unity game and share a few tips I learned the hard way. But first, let me convince you that you need automated tests for your game. This is my passion project, a deep sci-fi space colony simulator called Stardeus. It has about 50 various systems that interact with each other in unpredictable ways. It is also released on Steam as an early access title, which means a few things. I'm actively developing it every single day, there are players who paid money to play the game in the early access state, and there are more bugs and balance issues than a finished game would normally have. I don't have a QA department and to properly test my game end to end I would have to play it for some 50 hours. As much as I enjoy my game, I can't afford to play test it properly every single time I want to release a new version. If you were in my shoes, how often would you update this game on Steam? Before you make a guess, here's me a decade ago giving a talk about deploying an application hundreds of times a week. This was before the practice had a name, now it's called continuous delivery. I certainly don't make hundreds of builds a week for star days, but unlike my here, the habit of frequent deployments is still with me, and thanks to the tests, I'm able to release a new build almost every single day with a very high level of confidence that nothing important will break. Sure, tests are not a silver bullet, and sometimes bugs do slip through the cracks, but I'm I'm usually able to fix them within the same day. This allows me to build the new stuff and improve the player experience at the same time. The alternative would be a long development cycle with no updates, followed by a long manual testing cycle full of unproductive back and forth bug fixing and manual retesting over and over until all the obvious problems are fixed. Then the players would still find a bunch of bugs that were overlooked and then you have to crunch to prepare a hotfix, which also requires full manual testing. I never experienced this but I believe it has to be very exhausting. I'd prefer to not crunch and stay with automated testing and releasing new builds every couple of days rather than months. Here's an example of manual versus automated testing. I will go through Stardeus tutorial manually and then run a test that does it automatically. Three days later. And now the automated tests run. Going through the tutorial every time a new build has to be made would be extremely boring and repetitive to say the least. While the test runs much faster than a human. And the human meanwhile is free to go get some coffee or just take a break. Finally, after running all the tests, I can confidently make a new build and publish it on Steam. The build is also automated and this is where Unity really shines. It takes about 5 minutes to make build for Windows, Linux and Mac and to upload it to Steam with just a single click. I did have to do some editor scripting for this, but let's leave that for another video. I was recently watching a GDC talk called AI Disaster Stories, and this bit in particular made me cringe. Let's take a look. The other one. So he just put a comment out right there, right? Well, when he went white, I said, well, when did you comment this out? And he said, a few months ago. <laughs> and so effectively, this poor guy had commented out 75% of the year's worth of work, and we had shipped it. <laughs> This would have never happened if they had automated tests. Unity has an official package called Test Framework that enables you to write tests for your game. It is fairly well documented, all you need to do to get started is to add the package to your Unity project, open the test runner editor window and create your first test. There are two types of tests you can write, Unity calls them edit mode and play mode tests. Edit mode tests are typical unit tests, they are meant for testing one single unit of work. You call a function with some input and verify the output, nice and simple. These tests are usually extremely fast and they are great when you want to test a specific module that has well defined input and output. But unless once you write your game in a very specific way, edit mode tests are not going to be super useful. Most of the tests in Stardeus are play mode tests. In software development terms, these are called integration tests. They run the full game rather than just isolated functions with input and output. And they are actually pretty easy to write. Let's take a look at a typical play mode test in my game. This one is meant to test if workers are able to extinguish multiple fires. I'll run it to demonstrate how it works. That was a little too fast, I'll make the test run at normal clock speed and try again. 
The game loaded a little area where things were on fire, then the workers extinguished it and the test ended. This just confirmed that the basic firefighting works as expected. Let's break down the code. First we load a save file, then we check if things are on fire. If they weren't, it would mean that something is wrong, either the fire went out on its own or we loaded the wrong save file. Then we spawn a few drones, and then we're waiting for all fires to go out and fail the test if the number of flames went above 9, which means that the firefighters fail to prevent the fire from spreading too much. After all the fires are extinguished, the test just ends. It would fail if any error would be logged or an exception would get thrown, but since that didn't happen, the test has passed. Let's take a look at a more complicated test. This test is meant to check if the human who has a spacesuit puts it on when moving from one livable area to another one with vacuum in between. This time I will pause the game in the middle of the test and show you the overlays. This is oxygen. You can see that there is an area without it and that the human will have to go through it to reach this meal. The temperature in this area is also absolute zero, so the spacesuit is really necessary. Let's unpause the test and let the human get hungry. Here we go, the human just went through the danger zone and put the spacesuit on as expected. The test has passed. In traditional unit testing, especially in the context of business software, a technique called mocking is often used to replace the actual systems with fake ones during the test runs. For games, I find it easier to just run the real systems and write tests in a way where as much as possible is not faked. Depending on the type of your game, you may consider mocking player input. If you have your input processing properly decoupled, feeding fake input in the test should be pretty straightforward. And if you're using Unity's new input system, you can mock the input using the input test fixtures they provide. Although I found it a little clunky and didn't use it for testing Stardeus. Testing by loading save files worked best for me. You already saw this in the couple of tests I showed before. Firefighting and the human wearing a spacesuit in vacuum. Whenever I want to create a test like that, I create the test environment in the sandbox mode, save it, then copy the save file into my test save folder and use it in the test. After the save file is loaded, all that is left to do is to run your assertions. It's the most simple and extremely powerful technique for making integration tests. The added benefit this gives is that it forces me to ensure backwards compatibility for old save files. I created a migration system that would adjust the data in older saves to be compatible with the newer versions of the game, and it worked out amazingly well. You can load a save from a two-year-old Kickstarter demo and it will load and work just fine. There are some flaws in either the Unity test framework or in the way I use it. When I run tests one by one, they work great, but normally you want to run them all at once. One of the biggest issues right now is that tests get increasingly slower as they run one after another. I haven't managed to solve this yet, so I sometimes run the tests in smaller chunks. Another issue is that when a group of tests is running, some of the tests are prone to random failures due to the state pollution from the tests that ran before. In this case, one of the biggest tips is to avoid static variables. For example, if you often rely on singletons, it will be more difficult to make your game properly testable. Talking about singletons and other anti-patterns, I highly recommend reading through the Game Programming Patterns book, which is free to read online. If you can afford to do that, make your game deterministic. It means that given the same random seed, your game should play out the same exact way every time. This has a few constraints. First, you have to always use predictable randomness. Instead of using Unity's good old random class, switch to using random from Unity Mathematics package and always use it with a seed. Unfortunately, there is another huge constraint for making a game deterministic. You cannot run game logic in concurrent threads. This is the reason why Factorio is single-threaded and the reason why Sardeus is not deterministic, which makes writing tests much more difficult. The last tip is to get rid of flaky tests. If a test is randomly failing half of the time, just delete it. If it tests an important part of your game, rewrite it with a different approach to make it stable. Having unreliable tests that give you false negatives is only going to waste your time. That's it for this video, if you enjoyed it, please consider giving it a like and write the topics you would like me to cover in the next videos in comments. Thank you so much for watching and now go write some tests for your game.